Good morning and welcome to my meditation. My name is Deborah Baker and I am so delighted that you have joined me this morning or whenever it is that you get to tune in. It's a beautiful morning here in Kansas and I am just so grateful. I, I love this season. I love the change of seasons and it's getting cooler out and and you can see these these things behind me. They're hyacinth beans and if you find that you really like them um, <clears throat> send me a message and I'll mail you some seeds. You can stick them in the ground next year and that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, at the end of this meditation I will have some more photos that I took in Idaho and Yellowstone National Park and it's good to be home. Oh, can you hear the train? I love the sound of trains. Let's begin by relaxing our bodies. Imagine a, a magical beam of light coming down into the top of your head and just going through your head. You know, we know that our brains are the command center. So let's allow this white light to, to just permeate our brains, to fill our brains, to relax us, to send peaceful thoughts. And as we allow our brains to send the message of peace and relaxation to the rest of our bodies, we can feel the relaxation, our shoulders sink down, our face loses all expression. We feel it in our ears, all the muscles around our heads and our necks. You may want to roll your neck a little bit this way and that way. Allow it to let go, your shoulders, like I said, let your shoulders sink down and allow that energy to enter into your lungs. Knowing that each breath comes easily and peacefully, we feel content, relaxed serene, all is well, and feel it just going from your shoulders down into your chest, your upper back, adjust your position if you need to so that you can fully, fully relax. <sighs> feel it going down your arms, to your elbows, through your elbows, to your lower arms, your wrists, your hands, your fingers and thumbs. It's funny, I sat down here and I deliberately positioned myself in a place where the sun wouldn't be in my eyes and the sun seems to have found me. But I don't usually have my eyes open too, too much during the meditation, so we'll be fine. Got a visit from Daisy. Now feel it moving through your heart space, through your shoulder blades, into your midsection. By now your heart rate has slowed down a little, your breathing has slowed down a little but not too much. Your brain has already shifted to the brain wave of meditation. Feel it move through your midsection, the bottom of your rib cage, into your tummy, your sides, your back, middle back, all the way down into your pelvis, your lower back, your lower torso, your hip bones, all the way down to your tailbone. Into the tops of your legs. down your legs to your knees, your lower legs, your ankles, your feet, all the way down to the very soles of your feet, the very tips of your toes. And 
so I asked my guides, you know, what, what are we to focus on today? And we have all heard lots of messages about, you know, what you focus on increases and focus on what you want and don't focus on what you don't want. And um, the message that when we um, are in that theta wave, which we are in during meditation, but also we are there in between awake and asleep and asleep and awake. So as we're falling asleep and as we're waking up, we are in theta wave. So let's imagine that we simplify our thoughts. You know, people can really complicate things and myself included, you know, I got to do these 50 different meditation or uh, affirmations and I have to do these, you know, I have to make sure I remember this and that and this prayer and that prayer. Let's let go of all that and make it very, very simple. So imagine as you are waking up, you come either you come up with your own um, you know affirmation or you you borrow mine which is God guide my thoughts today guide my thoughts words and actions what would you have me think say and do today now if there is a a certain outcome that you really want, say, you know, someone recovering from an illness or, um, you know, whatever it may be, you, you know, I, there's no harm in, in thinking that, but sometimes we become so focused on the affirmations or focusing on what we want that we forget to relax, we forget to let go, we forget that we, in and of ourselves, in and of our human selves, are powerless. It is the infinite presence moving in through and as us that has the power. So when we say, God, think my thoughts today, guide my words and actions, what we're, we are reminding ourselves of is that we are not in charge. We are not the power. The power moves in through and as us. Another possible affirmation could be, I am powerless. I allow the infinite power to move in through and as me. And notice the difference between feeling like we are responsible, I've got to think of all the exact right thoughts or it's not going to happen. What if instead of doing that, we trust the universe? You know, infinite presence, you know what I need. You know my soul's intention in being here. You know that I want to be loving and kind to all other beings. So I let go of all the busy work. You know, busy work is for first graders whose teacher has something else she needs to do and she needs to keep them busy. But we're adults and we don't need busy work. The concept of affirmations, I am whole and perfect exactly as I am, um, I am prosperous, all of those affirmations, the, the, the purpose of them is to direct our thoughts toward the infinite, toward God. So if we, you know, catch ourselves thinking a negative thought then we can cancel it and think, you know, what we really want. You know, I'm, I'm gonna, I choose not to worry about, you know, this grandchild or this child or, you know, this sibling what, or this family member or this friend. I choose not to place any worry there. What I choose to do instead is, instead is to know that God is moving in through and as 
every being on this planet, including dogs, including cats, including all of our pets. I invite you to think of it as an energy field, a force field that we can either tap into or fight against. And when we tap into that energy field, when we tap into the infinite presence, we, we relax. Because, you know, I, I read somewhere, you know, in, years ago that pray as if everything depended upon God and act as if everything depended upon you. And, and I disagree with that because when we relax and know that everything is coming through God to us, everything is coming as God through other people, we don't have to feel like it's, you know, we're, we're a hamster on a wheel. We can relax and go, okay, God, what is mine to do next? You know, this morning I had um, lots of ideas of what I wanted to get done today, and uh, my schedule got changed yesterday, and, and uh, I know that it's better for me to go with the flow. Well, okay, that, that event was taken off my calendar. So, God, how would you have me fill that? And I invite you to look for fun, to look for things that bring you joy. I really don't think that God meant for this human journey to be awful or hard or um, that we're meant to suffer. That's not to say that we don't encounter hardships, that we don't encounter pain, but we don't need to stay there. And one of the ways that we can get out of this kind of suffering mentality is to do things we love to do. To do things that make our hearts sing. I had the opportunity a couple weeks ago to spend the weekend with a family that I had not met before. Uh, but my husband knew them when he was a child. And I laughed so hard that weekend. Oh my gosh, my body hurt from laughing so hard. And it was such a wonderful feeling. I highly encourage you to find the people who make you laugh and hang out with them. And, and the people who uh, invite you to be funny. Everybody has a sense of humor, everybody can be funny. And, and to have fun, and, and uh, my favorite people are those who are funny, but not at other people's expenses. So, um, you know, I, I count my brother as one of them. And he's just, I always laugh when I'm around him. And, it, and, and it's not put downs, it's not, um, you know, at someone else's expense, it's just fun, it's just funny. Finding the humor in everything, it, because it's there. Imagine that every situation, every person, every place has within it joy and sorrow, humor, um, sarcasm, criticism, you know, it, it has the whole gamut of everything that's possible. So then you get to look and see what you want to find there. So do you want to find the joy, the humor, uh, or do you want to, um, you know, be, be critical? So, for example, when, we, when I was visiting that family, we were out on a, on a fishing boat and the motor stopped. And instead of getting all, you know, crabby and, and angry and upset, you know, people were saying things like, well, let me get out and, and get behind the boat and I'll kick my feet and I'll get us to shore. And, you know, and give me a rope and I'll pull us to shore. And, you know, just, just silly things that um, brought out the humor in the situation. We were in a lake, so we weren't going to go anywhere. It wasn't like we were on a river and we were going to get washed away. And, you know, it was, it was just fun. 
and all it takes is one person to find the humor in a situation and everybody relaxes. I, I was on an editorial board one time in, in college and there was this one guy who always made us laugh. He always found the humor and it was never at anyone's expense. And um, it was wonderful having him around. I don't know if you can hear that noise over there, speaking of humor. There's a bird bath over there, which I didn't realize was at dog height. And I guess it's time for her to have her morning drink of water. Sorry, birds. <laughs> so let's shift into that sacred place of silence for a moment. And maybe you'll hear the sirens in the background or the the wind rustling the leaves. The leaves aren't quite turning here yet, but uh, in my, oh, there's a squirrel who wants to join our meditation. So let's just be quiet and ask and know, allow ourselves to know, God, what is mine to do today? What is mine to think today? How am I to be today? Let's imagine that we, we've made this agreement, that our, our system, our, our pause and reflect is taking a nice deep breath all the way down to your tailbone, maybe, maybe two or three. Because when we breathe deeply, we, we reset our whole system, kind of like um, resetting your computer. And then in that stillness, in that moment, allow yourself to know what is yours to know right now. acorn just hit the camera. The, the uh, oak trees are having target practice with us and, and they won. <laughs> you know what you need to know when you need to know it. Infinite wisdom is inside of you, is part of you, is, is the fiber of your being. God is the very fiber of your being. And as God moves in through and as you, you connect to infinite peace, infinite love, infinite power, the power that moves through you, the power that makes the light turn green when you really need it to, the power that heals, the transforms, it is the fiber of your being. So one more nice deep breath. And remember that you are whole and perfect, exactly as you are a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful soul. And I am so grateful that you joined me. I open my heart to you. I send you infinite, unconditional love, and the, and the God in me honors and recognizes the God in you. Namaste.